Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with another Cabral concept. Today, we're going to be doing a Toxic Thursday. We're going to be talking about all things heavy metals and how they affect your digestion, your overall gut-based health and microbiome. That means the bacteria in your gut, but also how they could lead to autoimmune issues or migraines, skin issues, and many other diseases of the body. So the first thing we want to do is define what's a heavy metal, right? So um, a heavy metal, and these can be run on a heavy metal toxicity test, which is just a urine blood sample. That one's really easy to do. Just a little finger stick at home, uh, just like you would take your blood sugar, and then a urine sample, super easy to do. Um, or you can run a hair sample called a minerals and metals test, uh, and you can look for heavy metals in your, your minerals as well. So either one is, is totally fine to do. You obviously have those options, but we're really not talking about minerals here. So your minerals, let's just give a quick rundown. Calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, uh, manganese, zinc, copper, phosphorus, selenium, chromium, iodine, and a couple others. So when we look at that, we're saying, okay, those are okay. We don't want them in excess. Definitely don't want those minerals, metals, minerals in excess. But the heavy metals, which by the way, not all of them are actually considered heavy metals, but for toxicology, they are called that. So it's important to understand that. And the main ones that we look at are lead, a really dangerous one for the nervous system, arsenic, mercury, cadmium, and aluminum, all right? So we're going to talk about some of those today. So those are the ones that we want to watch out for, and they don't just affect our nervous system or our eyesight or give us headaches or blood sugar issues. Um, they actually cause an inflammatory response when they are consumed and digested. Now, the main place that you're going to find these heavy metals is typically from water-based contamination. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown here as well. So Aluminum is when we run a minerals and metals test, the most pervasive, meaning the thing that we see the most is always aluminum. It's typically what we see. And that's because it's in aluminum, um, well, it's, let's talk about this, deodorants, it's in aluminum pans, aluminum spatulas when you scrape the pan, aluminum foil, many other factors. But it's also used in drinking water and tap water. And that's because they'll add aluminum as what's called a, a surfactant. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to attach itself to other minerals, potentially, and it's going to pull them down to the bottom of the tank. Now, some aluminum is still left, and but it gives you clear drinking water. And so that's a lot of times why you're using aluminum in water. Again, that's why we always recommend water filters. All the water filters and the companies I recommend are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Um, but that's a big one, okay? Then there's also arsenic. Arsenic is added, I, again, like not a good idea, but it's added to water in many parts of the world. Um, you can see it in pesticides. And a lot of people talk about it in the soil. Yes, it's in the soil, but oftentimes it's because it's from contaminated water. And then it gets in um, like rice patches because rice grows basically in water, water and soil. And um, that's why the rice can sometimes have higher levels of arsenic. So important to just make sure that you're, consuming a low arsenic rice. If you're having rice, I've talked about um, different brands before. We can try to link up these for you at stephencabral.com forward slash 2477, which is today's show notes. Um, cadmium also found in drinking water. I've shared that before. But also, uh, I, I, it, like a lot of it is environmental-based. Batteries, certain pigments and colors and paints, uh, not really airborne, not really fume-wise, unless you're working specifically with it. Some plastics, uh, for the most part, that's where you're going to get it. But also, um, you have to be careful with things like mushrooms and even like crustaceans or shellfish uh, or even algae because these things will often be present at that, especially mushrooms. You want to make sure your mushrooms are tested uh, for no heavy metals. Uh, not, not even just food-based ones, but if you're taking mushroom-based supplements as well. All right, lead. This is from Old Homes. Uh, remember, Old pipes, water still runs through lead pipes in many, many cities and towns. And um, and so that's something to watch out for. So water uh, from your old pipes and then lead paint, et cetera. So those are the main ones uh, that we're going through. Mercury would be the last one. Mercury, oh, it can be from, you know, everything from... Um, What's the best way to say this so I don't get banned? Again, I'm not saying to do it or not do it, but certain shots, 
Uh, it can be in light bulbs. It can be in old thermometers. Uh, but mainly, it's it's from fish and and dental amalgams that I talk about uh, in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. So you have to be really careful. Don't have your mercury amalgams, your silver fillings taken out by a regular dentist. Make sure you're going to and uh, the organization is called I A. O-M-T. I had to memorize that. I-A-O-M-T dot org. And you'll be able to find a biological dentist there that can do a true extraction as needed. So that's that. And, and definitely, again, follow heavy metal detox. Use infrared sauna if you're going to have them removed. Um, but low, eat low uh, mercury-based fish. Really, really important. And I have a whole podcast on that. So we'll link that up today too at stephencabal.com forward slash 24. Seven, seven. All right, but let's get into how does the how do these heavy metals now affect the gut? Well, what happens is this: the heavy metals are consumed with the water or the food, and when they come into our gut, which is about twenty six feet, you know, of digestive lining from the start of the uh, mouth all the way through the stomach, and then through the small intestine, and then through the large intestine. And what happens is they begin to not so a lot of it will be excreted. There's no doubt about it, but some of it will actually begin to lodge and get mixed in what's called the intestinal epithelium. So that's basically the lining of your gut. And believe it or not, it's very, very thin. It really is. And so when you look at that, the heavy metals begin to interact with the bacteria there. They begin to be used to create biofilms. And I've talked about biofilms before and how they can be very dangerous for your body. They don't allow then for proper absorption. So you're oftentimes not making the uh, iron that you need, the B12 that you need, uh, what else? Um, vitamin K and many others. So just keep that in mind, really, really important. But one factor I think that often gets overlooked is it creates oxidative stress. So it creates inflammation. So your body knows that that metal shouldn't be there. There's an immune-based reaction. And what happens is that inflammation is created. Now, when inflammation happens, it can affect the actual bacteria in your gut microbiome. It can affect your absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. It can cause uh, water retention, gas, pain, bloating. But it can also create intestinal permeability. So now... We have these heavy metals that were contained inside your digestive system that are now starting to move out into your bloodstream. All right, so now they seep out through your bloodstream of about 26 digestive tract, and they can go now to anywhere. The brain, right? Alzheimer's, dementia. They can go to your liver. They can go to your thyroid for things like Hashimoto's. They can go to your joints for things like rheumatoid arthritis. They can go to where? Nervous system for uh, MS, for... Uh, overall in the body, lupus, fibromyalgia, et cetera. So again, let, let's keep in mind that heavy metals can be an underlying root cause of autoimmune issues or things like migraines from inflammation, um, psoriasis, which is autoimmune as well, in many cases, uh, skin conditions, et cetera. So that's, you know, worst case. Then it starts to move into the body because now we need to eliminate these from the body. So really, really important that we look at that, but just understanding that, Um, we have a root cause, heavy metals being consumed, causing damage to the gut microbiome, now poor absorption of vitamins and minerals, so we lead to deficiencies, and then these metals get into our bloodstream, which is toxicities, right? So when I talk about like, how do you heal? Well, healing is, is an equation. So it's bringing up your deficiencies and lowering your toxicities. Well, in order to do that, we need to remove the heavy metals, and then we need to rebalance the gut microbiome. And so, and you can do that, right? And so once you know how to do this, then that is the healing process. That's how you begin to empty your rain barrel. So of course, as you're doing something maybe like the CBO protocol and the CBO finisher, or let's say like the heavy metal detox or in the functional medicine detox or whatever you might be doing, do keep in mind that you have to then limit the new intake of heavy metals. So you're using a water filter, right? You're using a shower filter, let's say, or bath filter for your kids or yourself. Um, You're going to eat low uh, mercury fish. And um, you're going to make sure if you have rice that you're having low arsenic-based rice. And that's how you do it, right? You're going to start to switch out your pans, uh, your cooking ware over time. These Again, all these resources are at stephencabral.com forward slash resources, literally over 100 different companies that I recommend that I use with my own family. And this is really how we begin the healing process. So I'm not going to go over rebalancing the gut today because I have lots of podcasts on that. I have a whole category podcast just on digestion. So again, we'll link that up today at stephencabral.com forward slash uh, two, two, uh, sorry, two, four, seven, seven, stephencabral.com forward slash two, four, seven, seven. But I just want you to understand, like, so I'm not going to make this a long show because I, what I want to do is just try to impress upon you of how 
disease is created in the body, but also how dis-ease, right? A dis-ease of the body can also be reversed. Okay, so let's say heavy metals was the cause. You got, uh, you were drinking water, you didn't know, that had aluminum in it. Then you're using aluminum deodorant, and then you have aluminum pans with a metal spatula, and you're scraping those pans every time, and you're getting a little aluminum in your food, and then you're using aluminum foil, and then over time, these things begin to build up, and then you've got, you know, mercury amalgams in your mouth, you've got like four of them, and, and they're 20 years old, and the edges are starting to turn up, like I, you know, I talk about in my book, uh, and then all these metals are now in your body. Now you're, you know, 48 years old and you've got the early signs of high blood pressure, high cholesterol and an autoimmune issue. And you're like, how did this happen? Right? Well, okay. Now you might also have some bloating and digestive issues as well. Poor bowel movements. This can start, believe it or not, with just higher levels. We always see, not always, but we see elevated levels of aluminum and secondarily we can see mercury. And so again, I'm just sharing with you exactly what we find in clinical practice. And so that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. And it certainly doesn't mean that you need to have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or an autoimmune issue for the rest of your life. You don't. What we need to do is first go through the process, right? So again, I can't provide, I just have to give you the disclaimer, no medical advice, no medical cures, no medical diagnosis, or no medical, what's the other one? Treatment plans. There we go. So what we're going to do, though, is rebalance the body, right? So we're going to, okay, open up detox pathways, 21-day functional medicine detox, start doing infrared sauna if we can. Okay, what are we going to do next? We're going to then move into some type of gut healing program, like let's just say the CBO protocol. And then either at the same time or after, we're going to do the heavy metal detox because we might as well get these metals out of our body, but also don't put more in at the same time and we have to seal that gut, right? So that's part of the CBO finisher. So I'm not going to give you like step by step today because again, I don't want to, um, I don't want to glaze over this. It's too important to glaze over. It really is. So that's what I would do. Um, you can actually run this lab very, very easily with a little bit of snips of hair. And that will show you if you just do an inch and a half from the scalp, um, that will show you the last 90 days. You, you know, you're welcome to do that. And again, you can run this with your local naturopathic doctor, uh, an integrative health practitioner level two, or you can run it with the Equal Life team and that works as well. All these labs you can find at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. And we're always happy to answer questions. So again, just let me know how we can help. I'm always happy to do a follow-up show, but I want to keep this clean, keep it simple. This is how heavy metals disrupts your digestion and the gut and can lead to autoimmune issues. Take care, everybody. I'll talk with you tomorrow on another Cabral Concept.